Hello, welcome to a new creature tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use the new mesh grid deformation motor that I've just added to creature. It's a very exciting new mesh motor. So let's get started. First thing you need to do is you need to go to the regions tab, okay? And then select the region you care about. Now click install motor and select grid motor. Okay, let me show you what you can do. So with the motor, motor or the region selected, click on edit motor. Now immediately you're, you're, you're see, you see this grid, this uniform grid placed on top of your region mesh. That's exactly what it does. And what, what we're going to do is we're going to actually manipulate the deformation of this character based off the points of the uniform grid. Now we can change the resolution of the grid very easily. And this you can change to whatever you want, which gives you a very powerful option because you can basically manipulate your object based off your custom resolution of your grid. And again, this grid resolution is actually independent of the resolution of your underlying mesh, which is again another very powerful concept. Because when you're actually meshing your characters, you might have different requirements. Like You might actually need a very high resolution, resolution mesh for your bones, for example. You might need lots of points to get really nice curves. But you, when you manipulate the mesh, you don't actually want to have that many points, correct? You just want to have a minimal set of points to get you to the desired effect because too many points makes management, animation management of the mesh really difficult. So this new, this very powerful feature allows you to customize your own animation resolution. That's probably what I call that grid resolution where you can manipulate a set number of points on a very high resolution or very low resolution mesh. They're independent, so very powerful feature. Now let me set this back to seven. Okay, let's have a grid resolution of 7. Okay, let's start manipulating this mesh. How do I do this? Really, really simple. So I'm at frame 0 right now. If I select one of the points, if I just drag it, you can see I'm already manipulating the mesh, right? So I can select another point, and similarly, I can do manipulation of the mesh. Right? I can just drag and that sets a keyframe. Now that's obviously a bit tedious if you're just doing single point man manipulation. So I can actually drag a boundary and I can manipulate a group of points, right? And I can do the same thing here, okay? Something like this. Now I can then step forward a couple more frames. Let's go to frame 10, and let's drag the, f drag the face over to the other side. Let's, drag. let's try dragging this guy maybe like this, and then we push him a bit forwards. Okay, so let's step through the frames. You can see I'm really warping the mesh and I can get some kind of almost like pseudo fake 3D effect just by using just by pulling on the on the points of the grid, right? So this is kind of a very powerful thing feature that you can consider using this tool for. Let me just uh, drag this just a bit more so it gives it a bit more perspective. So now I can see the character seems like it's actually moving or panning its face in a in a fake pseudo 3D fashion, right? So you can do these kinds of face panning motions very easily with this mesh deform tool. Okay, so that's kind of cool. Now let me step forward a couple more frames and let's just try a couple random operations. If I pull the feet out, for example, okay, maybe like this, or maybe let's try this this guy here. Yeah, okay. So if I pull the feet out here, and if I go forward a couple more frames, and I'm gonna pull the feet down here as well. Okay. Now the, the issue with me, with doing mesh animation with points is oftentimes you have so many points and so many keyframes you don't really know which you know where, where you're setting the keyframes on and it, so it becomes really difficult to manage now with this tool it's a lot easier because the two buttons you need to remember are previous key and next key so when you click on previous key you can actually step backwards to all the re re relevant keyframes of your animation right so here I, I, I'm stepping through the different poses which I've set as keyframes. So I can easily, I can easily basically decide where the poses are and, and change them from there. Now, for example, let's take a look here. For example, I have a pose set at frame 19 because I stepped through the previous key. Let's say I didn't want this pose. What I do? Very simple. Just move my, move my mouse over to clear and this will clear the keyframes at this current frame. 
Okay, so immediately this clears it. So this allows for key fr for very very easy keyframe management, especially when you're dealing with mesh deformation with tons of points. Right. The other thing you can do is let's say I really like this intermediary pose here. This is an interpolated pose at frame 24. All I need to do is click on copy. Okay, I click copy, and this will copy the entire pose. Now, what I do, can do now is if I go to say frame 50, I can paste that pose, and then that gives me back the original that copied pose. So you can copy poses between uh, in between keyframes or at keyframes, and then paste them to other places. That's another powerful feature. The other thing I can do as well is let's say for this this pose over here, there's no keyframe here. I know this. There's no keyframe here, but I really like this pose and I want to break it down. Essentially, I want to set a keyframe. I want to break down all the knots as keyframes on this current frame. What do I do? Just click on break down, okay? And immediately you see all the keyframes have been, uh, other, other knots have been set at this current frame. So it becomes a keyframe as well, all right? So with these different operations, it should be really easy for you to do the mesh manipulation you want, right? So I hope you enjoy using this new mesh grid deformation motor because it allows you to manipulate meshes of different complexity a lot in a much more easier fashion. And once you're done with that, remember to click finish editing and this will take you back to animation mode. And now you can actually see your mesh deform deformed animation, which we just did. All right. So I hope you have fun with this uh, new tool and have fun animating.